Well, Tiger Woods is blaming prescribed medications for his arrest for driving under the influence in Florida. He was stopped by police early Monday, booked into jail and later released. Woods is a 14-time major champion in pro golf, but he's been recovering from back surgery and hasn't played competitively since February. Well, Carlos Scott joins us now from Atlanta. He works in sports marketing as well as crisis management for sports people in these kinds of predicaments. Uh, actually, and you've met Tiger a few times, Carlos. So uh, let's get to the statement that was released by Tiger Woods a few hours sure. ago, uh, apologizing for what he did. He said he takes full responsibility. But then he adds this, I want the public to know that alcohol was not involved. What happened was an unexpected reaction to prescribed medications. I didn't realize the mix of medicines had affected me so strongly. Okay, we'll get to the back surgery in a moment, but just from a PR point of view, uh, it would seem that Woods and his management team, they're going to need to do a lot more than just put out, you know, a couple of paragraphs on Twitter to put this behind them. Yes, I, I definitely agree, and I think that first and foremost, I think that was the improper way to address it. I think first and foremost, he should have had a public press conference taking full responsibility and not placing blame on any adverse situation um, like prescriptions and so forth or whatever, because at the end of the day, he has a lot of uh, resources, i.e. money, available to him. So he should have had, you know, be it a, a limo driver. I mean, you can even re, um, use Lyft or Uber. I mean, everybody's been kind of joking about if he felt, you know, that he was having some sort of ill effect. Yes, why didn't he take Uber is the uh, sort of one of the big questions right now. Right. Um, as, as far as the medication is concerned, uh, last week, Woods wrote on his website, it's been just over a month since I underwent fusion surgery on my back and it's hard to express how much better I feel. It was instant nerve relief. I haven't felt this good in years. So clearly there's been you know, this ongoing issue with his back. There's been some problems. It's been a long, long road to get him back into, into the game. But let's go back to the incident over the last uh, 24 hours. In Florida, it doesn't matter if you get caught with booze or illegal drugs or prescription medicine the penalty and the crime is all the same. So putting this statement out there that I was on medication, I didn't understand what was going on, it's not clearly for, for a legal reason, it would seem. Uh, it's more to do with image and trying to keep his sponsors? I, I think you hit it down on, on the head. I think that's probably what they were thinking, but from a responsibility and as a um, media crisis management expert and a veteran publicist, I can tell you that is not anything that I would have advised our clients to do, um, only because it only makes people vilify him that much more because they look at him, truth be told, him and a lot of star athletes as, uh, you know, spoiled brats. And so for him to come out and <laughs> via Twitter or Facebook or his website, I forget how the method it was, but it wasn't a public forum to issue a statement like that. Again, that's, that's just not anything that any veteran... Um, PR expert would have done. Yeah, and, and looking at the mugshot of Tiger Woods, it, it really is striking. He, he looks disheveled. Yeah, his eyes are, are glazed over. It, it's certainly not the Tiger Woods that we know, you know, from you know, the early 2000s, this champion on the course who was the world's number right. one. In, in some ways, it seems, uh, I mean, to me, I, I'd like to get your take on this. It seems to sort of sum up everything about his decline from being one of the greats of golf to where he is today. Ironically, yes, I agree. I mean, to that is the lasting image, unfortunately, for for um, some time that we will have of Tiger, um, as opposed to the Tiger in the green jackets, and if for him to have that type of celebrity accomplishment and everything, every kind of other success on and off the court, on and off the field, rather. And to, to now, his mugshot, that now people are already making memes on social media about it, is, is really a travesty. Very, very quickly, how, how would you go about ensuring that that mugshot is not the last enduring image that the public have of Tiger Woods? Uh, we'd have a, a public press conference, um, unrehearsed. Well, I won't say unrehearsed, but there's no uh, written statement. He would give it from the heart, apologize to the, to the people locally, apologize to his family, sponsors, and, and as well as even fans. And then I'd also have him to thank the local authorities and the arresting officers for arresting him because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, a lot of times, let's be honest, a lot of times celebrities are given a free pass in this situation. And for him to be arrested, that could very well be something to kind of wake him up 
and maybe even you know seek some help or some, some sort because all the surgeries that he's had over the last I think about 18 months he's he's obviously on some sort of medica medication and we think back to Michael Jackson had an issue with uh, prescribed medications and uh, it was later on, later on found out that Prince had an addiction to you know some sort of opiates so you, you just never know what's going on but I think it, he would it would behoove him and his team to seek possibly some sort of help to make sure that he's not having any kind of substance abuse issues yeah. and then um, to go from there. Okay, Carlos, we'll leave it there. Carlos Scott, we should mention your Vice President Marketing